Hello and welcome to part 6 of my video tutorial on how to make a browser game. In this uh, episode we are going to uh, secure our... we are going to hash our uh, passwords for the users. And also... well, that's enough. Let's make a short video. Uh, so right now this is our project. We, uh, we have this website. We can register. We can log in. If we register test123 then we will be redirected to a, a different page where it says we are logged in. Great. Uh, and we can log out. One thing that we missed is if you log in with the with the wrong credentials then you will get to this white page. We didn't have a redirect here. So let's start by fixing that. Let's go to the account options. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so right down here Instead of just echoing out, a uh, user cannot be found, we should just redirect them like this to the register page. Uh, page, register, and let's get the message. Um, login failed. Yes, something like that. So now if we run this and we try to... Yeah, login failed. So that's good enough. Uh, we should we should probably get into the habit of writing comments. I am really bad at writing comments, but if you just start start with a hashtag, and uh, then you can write whatever you want. It won't it will not be visible for the client browser. Uh, so just to, like give you notes that, because when you are looking back at this code a month later, it may look really confusing. So if you are writing difficult parts, you should always leave a few comments like this user. Uh, didn't match or <laughs> user not found password incorrect. So right now our code is fairly readable so we don't really need to have comments uh, but it's a good habit to get into. Uh, so anyways let's start by making the uh, when we are registering an account we are just putting the password in as is so plain text that's not very good. So what we'll instead do is to is to hash it before. So it will uh, it will take your input and will make a long string, a long string of text, uh, which you cannot you cannot reverse that. So even if you have the the hashed uh, password, it will be really difficult to decrypt or dehash. Um, so what we are going to do is we can just we can just do that first. Um, we are going to, and I, I am not a hundred percent sure on the syntax of this, so I am going to cheat uh, and look at my other screen. So, password hash. As you can see string password. Yeah, we can leave that. And which algorithm? And we are just going to use the password default um, because this one, as far as I know, is fine. And we can also specify a cost. Uh, this is the cost is like how many, if I understand this correctly, it's like how many iterations it will do. Uh, oh, I actually ended it too early. Um, so basically, the higher costs, the more secure password. However, the more processing time for your server, and it gets quite you get quite a long processing time if you like increase this to 20 or something. I think the default is 10, but 12 seems to be fine. I think it, when I tested it, it took like uh, 0 0.3 seconds. No, 0 0.03 seconds. Anyways, it, it doesn't matter. You can you can try different values and see what works for you. 12 is fine. Uh, let's just go with that. So this is actually all we need. And instead of putting in the password, um, we will just put in the hash. So that's great. Let's uh, see if this works. Uh, one thing we need to change first is if we go to our w uh, database and we go to the table users. Uh, right now our password is a varchar, a 60 length varchar. We're going to change this to char 60. So the password hash will generate a 60 character long string and it will always be a 60 character long string. Doesn't matter if your password is one letter or 10 letters. 
Um, so let's put that in as 60. Because there is no reason to having varchar because it's not supposed to be different. Uh, they should all be 60. Uh, and we just save. Um, I wasn't sure what's going to happen with these now, but it's fine. Uh, let's remove our users. We don't need them. And let's go to the site and see if we can register one. Um, break a password and standard mail. And you can see, I don't think you could see that in the video, but I could definitely feel the registration going a bit slower. Uh, so let's see what we got. If we go back to users, we update. So this is now our password. And you can put this in like a uh, online password cracker and it, it's going to fail. It will take a long time for someone to decrypt this. Uh, so now then what we need to do is when we log in we also need to change because we can't just send in the password as clear text uh, when we log in. So uh, let's do that. Uh, so log in and we can do this all the way up here. And same thing here, we can... Uh... Alright, how do we do this? Hang on, give me, a, give me a second here. Yeah, we gotta get the hash first. Yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's remove the password. So we will just get the username. Oh, I missed something. There we go. And we are going to fetch this. So we can, we can just do uh, results equals stmt fetch all. Or actually, we can do this inside of this. Because um, why not just, we can just check the row, and if, if it's zero, we, we failed, so we can just go here. If it's not zero, that means we have something, so let's let's fetch the data. And let's do something with that data. Um, so we can uh, we can say that the uh, the hash is going to be the uh, result password. So maybe maybe we could rename that like hash here instead of password, but password is fine. Uh, so this is what we are gonna gonna match on, and we are gonna use a uh, function called password verify and here we will just use the our password and we will compare it to the hash and I think this is correct uh, so we can just say if if that works let's do something if we could verify then we then we can do it. It's uh, login and username. Uh, so password verify will return a one or a zero. Uh, so if it succeeds, it will return one. Uh, if you don't write anything like this, if you say if and then and then the command, if it's a one, it will do something. It will uh, it will succeed. If it's a zero, it will not succeed. Uh, it would be the same as writing writing that. So. If password verify equals one, but you can just skip that. You don't need it. So with this, I, I think we are we are good to go. Uh, let's try it. I I don't remember. I think I. I think I chose the in the password password. Undefined index password, in line thirty. Uh, okay, uh, so we are result fetch all password. I wonder if we need to. Uh, it was called password, right? Yeah, it was. Do we need to do a for each loop for this? I don't think we need to. Okay, so what we can do here is to just use a command called var dump. I use this all of the time. It's so good. Uh, what it will do is to print out the entire array. So if we go back to our page and we just reload, here we can see that the uh, 
the array result contains this information. So it seems like we, we are getting the data, but since it's in an array, we need to specify which which element in the array. And let's do this the uh, lazy way. Let's remove this var dump. And let's just specify zero here. Because you don't want to... I mean, there's never going to be a situation where we will match on more than one row. So this will work every time. Because uh, we will make our our username unique. Right now we are matching on the username. But we will make that unique so you can have multiple ones. And it's going to work. So now we the password, the password or rather the hash will be the first element in the result array. It's password field. So let's go back and update, and we are logged in. Perfect. So that's great. Uh, so let's do one more thing. We can uh, maybe we can uh, filter the. Uh, we can filter the uh, the regist registrations a bit because uh, I, I don't like to have like enable weird characters. So let's do that. Let's uh, go to where are we? Okay, register account. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's do a regex. I am terrible at regex, uh, regular expressions. What it, what it pretty much is, you have a pattern. So we we will have a username string, and we will match it to a pattern. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy this s straight out of my uh, <laughs> previous code. Uh, let's just paste that in, and I will try to as best as I can explain this. Um, so what we are doing is we are saying that if username contains anything other than this, so you can have the the num the characters a to z, capital A to z, and uh, zero to nine. Uh, if it if we match and we get like we put in a um, a character which is not part of this, we will uh, we will not reach this criteria. So we can just put everything inside of this. We can just do like, like so. And we can get an else down here, else. Uh, and we can just echo out that, uh, actually not, not echo out, we can uh, get this. We can have the message failed uh, to or weird characters. Or disallowed characters, I guess, would be better. Uh, so now we're going to match and uh, we're just going to return them if they have written in something something weird. Let's see if that works. So we'll register and we can just register like that. And we submit. Oh, we can register with this. Really? Oh yeah. So, no. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be the opposite. Yeah, it's the opposite, isn't it? Let, let's try this again. Let's register with just normal characters. Ah, uh, yeah, weird characters. <laughs> All right, so what, what we can do is just we can switch this, or we could just type in one of these. So it, if it's not zero, let's try that again. Uh, oops, gotta have a valid email. There we go, failed characters. So let's also make a, uh, let's also, um, we can just look at the uh, string length. So we can say how many, maybe we just want the usernames to be uh, like, I don't know, 4 to 20 characters, something like that. Uh, so we can also filter on that. Um, so let's just do if the username 
dot length is greater than 20. And also, uh, oh, we can use these in the same one. Or the username dot length is smaller than four. So same thing here, we can just put these. Um, so we just do like that. And we can get an else statement here as well. Otherwise, we can just echo out, or not echo, let's uh, do this, redirect. Uh, we could say failed, too long, or short. Um, we probably want to like specify this. You, you can have two different separate if statements. One with this one, and if it fails, then send back this. If it doesn't, if it fails on this one, then send back the too short. Uh, but that works fine. Uh, but this is, of course, not going to work. Or it's going to work, but we want to restrict them even before getting to this stage. Uh, so if we go to register page, and we can we can just set how many characters there they need to type in, and we will do that just by typing pattern equals. Uh, let's see, it's it's like this minimum, maximum, and we end it. So it's like just like that. Let's see if that works. If we go back to our page, it should tell us if we if we have too few. Please please match the requested format. I believe if we nope, I thought we could see that in some way if we just like held on to it. I think we can specify a title. Uh, let's see. I think we just write title for min four characters uh, max. 20 characters. Now let's go back. We update. And if we just hold on this, there we go. Minimum 4 characters, maximum 20. So that's good because that means we, if they actually, to get to that PHP code that we just wrote, they will need to manually like go into the inspector and just turn off these elements by just editing the. Uh, is editing this, removing this pattern. So if they would do like that, then then they could type in like twelve, and and then we would fail on the too long or short. So that's probably a good thing to do. Uh, we can do the same with the uh, with the password. We can do a pattern dot. And I think we can just, what did we set to say, maximum? Oh, right, we don't have a maximum anymore. Uh, because it will be, <laughs> it will be hashed. Uh, let's just go with 32, why not? Most people don't have that long of a password. It's going to be fine. Um, so now we have that as well. And you actually don't, or do we need to specify an email? No, we don't. Uh, and that is because we are missing the, uh, or not missing, but you need to type required if it's supposed to be a required field. And I would say all three of our fields needs to be required. So if we go back and we just try to submit, um, then we will get like that. Please fill out this field. So I think that's, that's good enough for now. Um, this this worked fine. <laughs> so uh, I'll leave you with this. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care.